hello, I'm Ana Charisma Fontno, and my uh, presentation is on mental versus physical training of a F1 driver. Um, so the initial question that I started off with was how does sports psychology and physical training, uh, those effects compare on a Formula One driver? I chose this specific topic because I myself am a big fan of uh, Formula One. Uh, my dad and I will occasionally watch it, although he's more of a NASCAR fan, but that's okay. Uh, and I just like seeing the behind the scenes of Formula One and not just the race weekend and everything that goes into um, the cars and the teams and choosing strategies and the physics behind the cars. So it's interesting to see that side of it. Also, uh, my minor is in sports psychology. So it's interesting to see two things that I'm involved in and have interest in kind of combined and do a project on it. Also, I included a picture of my team, Ferrari, and my Carlos signs and my favorite driver, Charles Leclerc. So my bias for this project was that sports psychology is as important to the driver as their physical training. And the first source that I looked at to support this uh, was a study called Influence of Sports Psychology on Sports Performance and Analysis Based on Electroencephalogram Signals, EEG for short. It's a bit of a long word to pronounce twice. Uh, in this study, it was done in China over a plethora of different sport athletes. And they looked at the EEG levels and quality of those levels. Um, they did a regular stationary one doing the sport and imagery and then the sport after uh, the initial imagery session. And in this article, he noted that according to a large number of practical training studies, the motion imagery is a cognitive strategy that is conducive to the acquisition of sports skills and performance improvement, which can improve the skill level of athletes. And it should be noted in this study, they specifically only look at imagery. They did not use other forms of sports psychology um, like methods. Sorry. Um, the study also found that when athletes use sports psychology methods like imagery, there was an increase in the percentage quality of EEG power spectrum percentage. So there was improvement afterwards, just stronging my belief that imagery, well, not just specifically imagery, sports psychology in general, is necessary for athletes to improve. And the next study that I looked at is called Integrated Sports Psychology Support, a case study in motorsport. Now, this study had three sports psychologists support one, uh, 18-year-old elite mo motor athlete for nine months to improve his performance. And the psychologist and the athlete's team and the athlete himself came together to just kind of pinpoint some things that they think needed to be worked on and they could do sessions on. And each uh, sports psychologist specialized in different uh areas and the study itself was a look to see if there was a specific form of sports psychology uh that worked best on clients but in the end the psychologist decided that sports psychology that needs to be specialized too specifically for a person that there is no way to say one method works best for certain things it's a case-by-case -case scenario but mosley wimhurst and kavanaugh the psychologists in this case stated that evaluation and reflections of the program suggest that the athlete successfully learned slow paced breathing improved functional visions and enhanced performance preparation and in race regulation which those were the areas that the team and the athlete decided um were the issues that needed to not necessarily issues but things that could be improved on and they did see approval in the end now the next thing we had was not a study but an article by motorsports.com called how formula one teams look after their mental health and this article by smith discusses how teams and athletes discuss and deal with different mental obstacles that come in formula one it is a taxing sport um and a very dangerous one so uh there are some teams and athletes that have come out to talk about just the mental toll um, that comes with it and how they deal and battle with it. The McLaren team is known to have um, sports psychologists come to several Grand Prix a season just to ensure the well-being of the entire team. So not just even their drivers, but their engineers and, um, as well to make sure everyone's mentally OK to do their best for the race. Smith also wrote that in a title fight as close to the one Mercedes currently finds itself engaged in, marginal gains can be decisive, making human performance a key area of interest. It is something that mental health is intrinsically a part of. Uh, and then notably, though, this is from an article from 2021 uh, when Mercedes was fighting for that world championship title. But I mean, it just solidifies the fact that how important the mental aspect is to the sport and how if you aren't mentally at your top of your game, you're just not going to be able to pour out the performance that is necessary um, to have. Now, the source that kind of went against my initial bias is another article by motorsports.com called F1 Driver Training, What's Their Workout Regimen, Diet, Cardio, and More? And in this article, I mean, as our title says, it just kind of breaks down where the physical preparation and things that are needed uh, to physically upkeep to be a Formula One driver. And Holding starts off this article by just kind of breaking down the insane amounts of G-force that these drivers subjects themselves to. I mean, borderline the same as a uh, fighter, pilot, fighter pilot, these drivers are just going at insane speeds and taking these corners where even passing a 
brake pedal needs way more force than you would think. Also, the drivers need good cardiovascular health and fitness as our heartbeats just in a race, just average 170 miles like per hour, which is not easy um, on a regular person. And on top of that, the drivers also have to watch their weights as teams uh, have a weight requirement for the cars and they want as least amount of weight, like that total weight coming from their driver. Um, and they just want everything to be as light as possible so the car can perform as quickly as possible. Even the milliseconds can really just add up in the end. And Holding also writes on how drivers and their personal trainers relationship is crucial to being successful on track using Lewis Hamilton as in his long-term trainer, Angela Cullen, uh, up until actually this March where they parted ways as an example of how much an impact trainers have um, on their athletes and physical health. I mean, Angela was part of Hamilton's team for every single one of his world championships. And even if you are a casual, you know, you're not a Mercedes or Hamilton fan, you have seen Angela and you can see the relationship that Hamilton and um, Angela had for one another and just how important she was to his winnings. Uh, I would say my bias has changed just ever so slightly, very minuscule, but I would say that mental is not as important as physical, but it is also important. Uh, I would say now that after being that last girl and just having it broken down to me on how much they put their bodies through, I would say that physical needs to be the first step. And once you've gotten through that initial physically you're like fit to be a formula one driver i think that very next step needs to be looking at that mental and it needs to be done and it is extremely important but i don't think i would no longer say it is as important as uh physical strength and those are my sources and thank you